We all know the importance of content to a client SEO campaign. It is one of the most, if not the most important elements of getting your client's results. However, we also know all the headaches that it can bring, trying to find and manage freelance writers, trying to match the tone and voice of the client, trying to match the expectations for what the client thinks that content should be because it's subjective. When our agency started putting more emphasis on content briefs as opposed to finished articles, we saw a massive jump, not only in the client approval and happiness, but also in the results because really what you're doing with a good content brief is you're creating a coloring book that any writer can come in and literally just stay within the lines to create very high impact content that ranks right out of the gate. And this fits in perfectly whether you write content all the way for clients or you choose to just do content briefs like our agency does. The content brief is the most important part of making sure that content is high performing and impactful. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how we create content briefs for clients. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you our templates that are both in Notion and in Google Docs for you to swipe and use on your client campaigns today. Let's get into it. So you already know I got to start with the overall process because the process is more important than the tactics. If you don't know where to execute these, then it doesn't matter how good it is. It's just not going to work. So what you're looking at here is a very high level rolled up view of our overall SEO sprint business model that we use for clients. Link to a video below if you want to check out more about it. But what you'll notice here is that content briefs come in kind of in the middle of the end of the campaign. So what we're doing here is we're going through our strategy sprint here up first. That's everything in yellow. And what we're doing here is we're setting the tone to create content. Our website quality audit is an amazingly powerful audit. All of our blueprint members get access to it. And what it does, it allows us to review every single piece of content on a page and make a decision about what we want to do with it, how we want to handle it. Do we want to update it, delete it? Do we need to rewrite it? Do we want to build links to it? Etc. And once we go through that process, then we've determined everything on the website that we want to improve. So we've got a list of all the pages that we want to clean up and improve because we already know the fastest turnaround in traffic is going to come from improving on the existing assets that the client has. But after we do that, then we do our competitive keyword analysis where we go out and we find new keywords that we want to build content around. So now we've got a list of content that we want to improve and a list of content that we want to create around. And we lump these into a content workbook right here. And then from here, now we have a running list of the content topics that we work on, want to work on for the life of the campaign. Now, this is really important. We have not done keyword research to this point yet. And when I say keyword research, yes, the keyword gap analysis is keyword research because it's helping us to discover keywords, but we're not going through that process of ident identifying secondary keywords, semantic keywords, and the page layouts because we haven't quite hit that part in the process where we want to spend that time and energy on it. Because if you do all that work here up front, you're burning a lot of hours before the client's ready for it. So that's why the content brief is so important because this is when we do the actual detailed keyword research when we create the content brief because the the way that our system works is that a client pays us basically per piece of content or per content briefs in batches of 10. So when we're actually creating these content briefs, this is when we really get granular with finding all the exact keywords. We build out the page layout and that's what I'm going to show you now. Let's jump over and take a look at the content brief template and I can walk you through the process within there as well. So this document here is our content workbook that we use inside the blueprint training. This is where we record all the topics, some keywords and the traffic and all this stuff. We also go through and this is where we start to blow out some of the keywords. But over here, this is where we do the actual content brief. So each topic here gets its own content brief that we just link to right from here. So this is the content brief template. This is what you'll get access to at the end of this video. This is also what essentially what our clients pay us $350 per each one of these four. If we do write the content, then we'll charge $1,500 to $2,000 depending on the scope of the post. However, a client gets this and this can be either given directly to the client or we'll pass this to directly to a freelance writer for the writer to write and then create on behalf of the client. So it's very simple how we organize this. We've got our administrative details details up here. When is the draft due? What's the total word count? When's the publish date, right? Just to make sure that we have some level of organization. We'll also then put in some brand details here. And this is important because if a writer's coming in here for the first time, it's under, it's important for them to understand kind of like the tone and the voice, right? So there's a bunch of additional things that you can link to in here. If you've got some audience persona documents, we just like to link out to the client's blog. If you've done any sort of additional, you know, work and strategy work with a client, this is a really good place to put that in here as well. And the cool thing is that after you get a hang of working with a writer, you don't need to put this in here every time. This is really just kind of a template for new writers, but this is very easy to edit and change depending on, you know, the skill set or the level of familiarity of that said writer. Then we get into the actual article details here, and this is probably the most important part. So the page type, right? And this is an important question that we get asked a lot is that, you know, how do you create landing page content? How do you create an about page content? We use this exact same template, right? This is malleable to work with any type of post or any type of page on a website. So this one here is for a blog post, but if you're doing this for a 
pay-per-click landing page, right? Which we'll actually do for our clients, right? If they're really dead set on getting some landing pages up, we'll charge them a lot more for it, but we use the same system and same framework. So again, that just gets listed out here as well, where the type of the pages here, right? If it's a video, if it's a, a, a blog post, if it's a podcast, right? It doesn't matter what type of content it is. We can use this exact same template to create every single piece of content that needs to go into a marketing and SEO campaign. Then we'll go into the content tactic, right? So the content tactic, this is something that we teach a lot in the blueprint training. Uh, there's like curated roundups. There's things like expert guides. Uh, there's things like product reviews. There's all sorts of different content tactics that fall within the page type, right? So again, if we're saying that this is going to be a landing page, then the content tactic could be like a pay-per-click landing page or like a squeeze page or like an ebook page, right? If this was a blog post like it is now, it could be a whole range of things from like a top 10 article to a very detailed expert guide, as I already mentioned, right? So it's important to kind of distinguish these things here and then link out to some examples so the writer can understand that and give them context. This is something that, you know, I'm very big on with our team internally. It's to me, context is everything. So when we bring in a writer, it's not just like, hey, here's the keywords that you want to kind of go after. It's here's the context. This is what we're trying to achieve with the look, the feel, uh, and the content type so that we can provide the right experience to the people who are reading and seeing this content. It's really, really important. And it's really kind of, to me, what makes a lot of the difference between okay content and good content or good content and great content is understanding the context, you know, understanding how to chunk and format that post. And that's all just by education, putting a little extra work into this content brief here. So the writer knows exactly what to do to help you out. So we write the page title for them. We'll put in the meta description, the URL slug here as well. Uh, then we'll go into the framing keywords. So the framing keywords, these are often called semantic keywords, secondary keywords. We like to call them framing keywords because we're building an outline, right? So we're framing the page for how it should look using the keywords. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. So what we're doing here is this is when we're actually going in and doing the very detailed keyword research. So our team has a very specific process for doing that. Again, it's all taught within the blueprint. We use a combination of Ahrefs to look at competitor keywords. We'll use Google Search Console to look at if they have this content already on their website. What are they picking up for? What are they getting impressions for? And then relating that back to the post. And what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to create a certain level of re relevancy and framing, right? We're literally trying to frame the post for Google and these keywords kind of become like the pillars and the building blocks, if you will, that we want to build the context of the page around. So again, we're still not getting into the specifics of it. We're using the keywords to dictate how we want to format and create this content. So this process takes a good 30 minutes to an hour and a half, just depending on the level of familiarity of our staff uh, with this client already to build out these keywords. Sometimes it's very easy. You know, sometimes you can literally just take the keyword, put it in Ahrefs, find this, the other keywords, or just take the keyword, go to Google, find the semantic keywords by just typing it in. Uh, and it just essentially tells you what to frame the post around. Also just looking at the search results to seeing what's in there. Uh, down here is we use a platform called ClearScope as well. So we'll link out to that ClearScope report. It's a content optimizer. Uh, essentially it tells us like a content grade based on the keywords that we give it really good tool if you haven't used it before um you know we teach it and using the blueprint there's other great tools out there too like surfer and uh you know like just a bunch of it's basically an on-page optimizer software it's not necessary but it does you know help the frame and drive the relevancy of that post a little bit more then we go into the internal links so internal linking we like to put in at least at three internal links for every piece of content and what we do there is we look for other posts on the website that are similar and we can build content clusters around right so if this page that we're building right here is around i don't know like top 10 crms we'll look for other content on the website that mentions crms already or we'll then add a future internal link to the other content that we want to build around it. Again, I have a video that talks about how we use pillars and clusters to group content to create these relevancies and silos on a website. Definitely check that out. But internal links are really what tie those different posts together. That's how Google goes from one page to another through that internal link. And it literally links them together and creates a pocket of relevancy on the website. It's really powerful stuff. Uh, and then sources, right? So these are the sources that they need to to get the data that they might need to run the article. So we'll have to do some research here. So again, if we're talking about like top 10 CRMs, we don't want to just tell the writer like, hey, go pick 10 random CRMs. We'll do some research. We'll go to like G2 Crowd. We'll look for, you know, what other people are saying about the top 10 um, CRMs out there. We'll literally do the research for the writer. Uh, and then we'll also just inform them too that like, you know, it's not really our job to do all the research. We're giving you the, we're, we're, we're getting the ball rolling for you. Literally, we're starting to push the ball uphill, but we're paying you to do the rest of the research. But this is what these are the types of sources that we want. This is what we're looking for out of this content. 
and important too, these are sources not for like, hey, make it look like this article. These are sources for, hey, here's a, here's a good place to get relevant, reliable information around this topic. Again, so that way we're not relying on the writer to just go out and find random sources. They're finding stuff that is really impactful and meaningful. Uh, and then we go into the outline, right? So this is, again, probably the most important part. We're building the outline for them. And this is the coloring book part. So all this stuff up here is all the administrative details, gives them the keywords, the internal links, the sources, everything they need. And now we're literally going through and building the outline saying this is exactly how we want it to format. And the outline type is going to be heavily dependent also on the content tactic, right? So we're saying that this is a curated roundup. So this should be a roundup of like, you know, this could be like, again, this is about CRM. So like, uh, you know, one HubSpot two, um, like, you know, uh, pipe drive, whatever it looks like. Right. Uh, so we're building the outline here. We're giving the opening paragraph. We're giving them a little bit of copywriting advice here too. It says start with a hook to entice the audience that empathizes with the reader on a problem or difficulty. We like to use what we call our PAS framework, problem, agitate, solution. All content should present the problem, it should agitate a little bit by making them feel the problem a little bit more, and then provide a solution, right? So if we're talking about the top 10 CRMs, the problem is, hey, like, it, like finding the right CRM is difficult. So we went out and did the work for you. Solution, here's 10 CRMs. Very simple, right? Um, so that's the opening uh, paragraph there. And then we just get into like building out the H2s for them. So if we're saying like the first one is HubSpot in the list, we're giving them context to tell them how to write about it. So write a little bit more about HubSpot here. Talk about the benefits and the drawbacks. Um, you know, they have that here on, on G2, like I said. Uh, what's the average review, the pricing options, link to the website, and then use these terms here. And then also add a full size image. So we're also giving them, you know, information on how to put in media and images and videos as well. So this right here, again, if we're saying that this is the top 10 CRMs, this is like number one HubSpot. And then we go through and help them build that even more. Uh, and then this just goes into here too about like uh, specific review management, uh, how to use H3s throughout there. Like, and this is, this is combining two outlines. This one isn't just for CRMs. This is just more context for the template, right? Um, so we'll also put in like comparison tables, right? Like how to use again, like these are, these types of features are really good for search. It helps to just build more context for Google and pull through potentially into the knowledge graph, things like that. And then conclusion paragraph, and then, you know, like a call to action uh, if needed. So we use macro and micro call to actions within this. So that's everything in here. We also uh, use... We'll also use Notion for this. Um, so Notion is a little bit just of a, a kind of a cleaner version uh, because it allows you to kind of uh, just a little bit more flexibility than a Google Doc, but everything in here is in the same page details, keywords, monthly search volume, internal links, external links, view the uh, clear scope report right here so we can link out to that as well. Uh, writing guidelines, so we'll actually provide them some writing guidelines as well, or if the client has writing guidelines. And then just the same thing, the roadmap, body text guidance, if there's FAQs within there as well. And what's cool about Notion is that you can actually share this as a link, right? And you can store them in, in Notion as well. So if you don't use Notion, then we've got the Word doc for you to use as well. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. That's how we use content briefs as a part of our overall SEO process for clients. Literally, probably one of the most important deliverables that we do aside from the website quality audits, how we make a large portion of our money. Clients love it. Writers love it. And we get the results that we need for our clients. So if you want access to these, there's a link below. It will take you to our pro Slack community. We have access to all these templates in there. There's a small fee to join our community, but within that community, you will find a network of true SEO experts led by seven figure agency owners from the top down, helping you answer any questions that you might need 24 seven plus access to a bunch of templates, tools. We do weekly live trainings. There's a bunch of stuff up there. There's a link below. Check out the community, see if it's a good fit for you. And I really hope to see you up there. And if you do shoot me a DM, we can talk and that's where you can get some one-on-one -on -one consulting with me as well. So hope you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment, like it, and hopefully I'll see you in our pro Slack community.